So in this video, I'm gonna show you ways to increase your human growth hormone naturally. Now, there are a lot of reasons people take injections or creams to increase their human growth hormone, and that's because it lowers your body fat, it increases your muscle mass, it lowers wrinkles and premature aging, it helps give you energy, helps you sleep better, improves sex drive, it also helps with uh, anxiety and depression and so many other things. It's basically everything that most people want. That's why people go after it so much and our rate of human growth hormone naturally decreases with age, especially after 30 and then even more after 40. But there are many bad side effects to taking it uh, as injections. So in the blog at theartofunity.com, I'm gonna show you many different ways on how to help with this, such as such as lowering the fat around your torso, as well as uh, lowering sugar consumption and uh, increasing your, your zinc and vitamin D intake. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the number one way that I have found naturally to increase your human growth hormone through high intensity training or activating your white muscle cells or what's known as your, your super fast muscle fibers. Now all this is based on Phil Campbell's book called Ready, Set, Go and his sprint day program. Now this type of high intensity interval training actually produces so much testosterone that it mimics an HGH injection. And because of that reason, there's no test for Olympic athletes for human growth hormone because their levels would be so high that it would create a false positive. Now this, this human growth hormone goes after fat in your body like a heat seeking missile for the next two to 24 hours after you do it and it takes less than 20 minutes. So to compare it to jogging, because so many people tell me they jog to lose weight and they're on the treadmill for an hour to two hours in the gym, when they think that's helping them. Jogging is actually terrible for you. It's really hard on your joints, in particular, your knees and your hips, and it's also very aging. Jogging is a very unnatural movement. We're the only ones who do it. And if you look at the behavior of children in a playground, you'll never see them jogging. You see them either sprinting, walking, or standing still. It's the same with animals. We're the only ones who do this. And if you look at the physiques of sprinters versus marathon runners, the sprinters have the bodies more that, that people are seeking right now. They're, they're more muscular and they're, they're, they're more striated, they're more ripped as well. Now this type of training will, will have, has been shown to produce more than 700% increase in human growth hormone. Now that's just the average. There are some people that had a thousand percent increase. So this is very beneficial for you for those reasons. Now it's very important what you eat before and after this workout. What I eat is a diet that consists of uh, high protein and high fat and low carbs and especially no sugar. Now the high protein, high fat diet, that'll consist of something like kefir, uh, lentils, quinoa, green vegetables. Now the reason you, want, you don't want to eat any fructose or sugar is because what that will do is obliterate any human growth hormone that we've created, especially up to two hours after the workout. That's a really important reason to stay away from any of these uh, supposed sports or energy drinks because they're full of those things. What I drink while I do this is uh, pure water with uh, Himalayan sea salt in it. It's known as Soleil, you can see my blog about that. But it's also important to know that sugar, and you can see this in my video on uh, muscle testing, is that it slows down and weakens all of the muscles in your body. So you especially never wanna do that because of that reason, as well as the fact that it will stop any HGH that is created during this process. Now how you do this workout is very specific. You're go basically going to do eight sprints with a minute and a half rest in between. So we start out with the dynamic stretch, and you can see my video on that, and then you, uh, let's call it a slow sprint for about three minutes or jog or something like that, just to get the blood moving in your body. Then you're going to sprint or uh, let's say bike, stationary bike, many different, an elliptical is really good to do this on, but you're going to do it with such intensity that you're leaving nothing on the table, that at the end of the 30 seconds, you can't take another step. I like to do it here on the beach running because I get the benefits of earthing as well. And you can see my blog on that. And I go much further than I would go running with sneakers or in a treadmill. Uh, now you can do this on a treadmill. I highly recommend against that 
because what you have to do in order to do that is put it to the highest intensity and, and the highest speed and hold yourself on the banisters until you can run up to the speed of the treadmill. Then to stop, you have to catch yourself on the banisters. It's very difficult to do and very dangerous, and I don't recommend it. I'll show you how to do it, but if uh, you can, get out and do it somewhere barefoot so you get the benefits of earthing. So now, if you're sprinting, running, you can, after the first couple out of eight, the first one or two, you can go for just 10 seconds. Now the caveat with that is those 10 seconds have to be the hardest 10 seconds of your life. Like you couldn't go another step. Now if you are able to go, continue going. You shouldn't be able to talk normally while you're doing this in, in between the uh, sets or anything. You're getting your heart rate up above 150, it's 160, 170 range. And then when it comes back down to let's say 140, you're going to feel like you're standing still. And that'll be a range where you're able to talk and have a conversation. Not normally, but you'll be able to have that conversation. So you're raising your heart rate up with eight sprints with, a, with a, between 10 and 30 seconds and resting for 90 seconds each. The reason I'm making a video on this is because every time I've shown this to somebody who told them about it, they never do it to the right intensity. So I'm gonna show you the intensity where you really need to be doing this at. Okay, so I got the warm up in, a dynamic stretch, a slow jog, about three minutes, and I'm gonna start the first of the sprints of the PK.